hello, my name is Tomás Tobrit. I'm a researcher here in Chagas Moor Park and uh, I'm going to be discussing the Passer Profit Index and the SWORD Utilisation Sub-Index, which is new uh, to the PPI in 2021. So the Passer Profit Index, or the PPI, is a perennial ryegrass variety selection tool. Uh, it is used by the grassland seed industry and commercial farmers when making uh, perennial ryegrass variety selection decisions. Um, it's also used by uh, plant breeders to direct their breeding goals um, for those breeding companies. So the PPI, it's an economic ranking index, which means uh, it records variety performance based on the uh, additional profit it brings to uh, Irish dairy farms. So we can see here that Aberclyde was the top variety in 2021 with a total PPI value of uh, 225 euro. And this 225 euro is the sum of the traits or the sub indices that make up the pasture profit index. And these are uh, seasonal herbage yield, uh, quality mid-season, silage yield, and persistency. And new to the 2021 pasture profit index is the uh, grazing utilization sub index. And um, this is what I'm going to focus on in my presentation today. So the uh, Chagas on-farm uh, variety evaluation study has uh, influenced the pasture profit index. It's a very valuable trial that we have where we saw uh, individual varieties in paddocks on a number of farms across Ireland. And um, we take data then um, from these paddocks. So um, this trial began in 2013 and uh, one of the earliest uh, feedback that we got back from farmers about these varieties was that um, Certain varieties were easier to reach um, low post-grazing sward heights than others. And um, as we know, low post-grazing sward heights uh, are desirable as it increases the milk production potential uh, of these swards. So um, uh, because these varieties were uh, less grazing efficient or less utilizable, uh, the farmers didn't want to be sowing these varieties. But when they looked at the pasture profit index, uh, and they were making variety selection decisions, there was no indication of whether a variety would or wouldn't be suitable to animal grazing. And therefore, um, uh, we set out to fix this. So the Moor Park variety grazing studies uh, have been conducted over the last number of years. And within these studies, we've evaluated uh, perennial ryegrass varieties uh, on the recommended list and also candidates going for recommendation. So. Um, the varieties are sown in plot studies and are managed in a rotational grazing system. Uh, the plots are grazed when the average cover across the plots uh, is 1,400 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. Uh, prior to grazing, we take a number of uh, pre-grazing measurements, such as a herbage yield uh, assessment, uh, sward morphology, uh, herbage quality, and pre-grazing height. After this, uh, a herd of cows then comes into the paddock. The cows have free choice to graze whichever um, variety plot they want and to what height. And um, once the cows are finished in the, uh, in the paddock, uh, we take individual post-grazing sward heights off each variety plot. So one of the first pieces of results that we found from this trial was that um, Pre-grazing height affects the post-grazing sward heights of varieties and therefore just using post-grazing sward height as a measure of grazing efficiency was biased towards varieties with lower pre-grazing height. So as we can see here, variety one has a pre-grazing sward height of about nine and a quarter centimetres and then that variety would be expected to be grazed to about 3.9 centimetres in post height. We then look at variety two and variety two uh, is one centimetre higher in pre-grazing height and therefore that variety would be expected to be grazed to a higher uh, post-grazing sward height than variety one. So then using these predicted post-grazing sward heights, uh, we wanted to create a measure of grazing efficiency between these varieties. So this graph here displays the actual and the predicted post-grazing sward heights of varieties. The bars represent the actual post-grazing sward height varieties. So these are the post heights as measured from the plots. And then the green dots display the predicted post-grazing sward heights of these varieties. And what interests us is the difference 
between the predicted and the actual post grazing support heights. So if you look at Aston Energy here, it had a predicted post grazing support height of 3.9 centimetres, but actually within the trial, it was grazed to 3.7 centimetres. That's a difference of uh, 0 0.2 centimetres. <clears throat> and as Aston Energy was grazed lower than uh, predicted or expected, it has high grazing efficiency. We then look at a, a variety Drumbo here. Its predicted post grazing support height, the green dot, is close to four centimeters, while its actual post grazing support height was somewhere around 4.2 centimeters. Its actual post grazing support height is higher than its predicted by about 0 0.2 centimeters, and therefore that variety is grazing inefficient, or that variety is poor grazing efficiency. We also have varieties like Abergain, which has one of the highest actual post grazing sword heights. But when we compare it to its predicted post grazing sword height, there is literally no difference between those varieties. And therefore, uh, it'll ha the difference is zero and it is described as moderately grazing efficient. So this graph displays the residual graze height of varieties. And residual graze height is simply the difference between the predicted and the actual post grazing sword heights of the varieties. So we can see here that um, tetrapoid varieties in red tend to have a lower residual graze height. Therefore, they are more grazing efficient. And um, the results from these plot grazing studies uh, match well to what we were seeing uh, on farm with the varieties. So the pasture profit index um, is expressed using economic values. That's how variety performance is expressed. And therefore, we needed to do the same for residual graze height. So therefore, we determined the additional net profit created from increased grazing efficiency uh, as with increased grazing efficiency, you're going to increase the amount of herbage utilized on your farm, and that's going to increase your net profit. So if we take variety one here, it has a negative residual graze height value. Therefore, it's going to utilize um, an extra 50 kilograms of dry matter per hectare at each grazing event. Over the course of a year, it's going to utilize an extra 400 kilograms of dry matter and uh, that's worth an extra 17 euro net profit per hectare um, to the farm. Variety two has a positive residual graze height value. It's grazing inefficient. It's going to utilize less herbage at each grazing event. Over the course of a year, it's going to utilize uh, 280 kilograms less dry matter over the course of the year. And that's going to reduce net profit by uh, 11 euro. Um, you can see here that we also have the utilization star rating displayed. Um, not all the varieties currently on the pasture profit index uh, have done their grazing efficiency assessments. And therefore, uh, we have expressed variety grazing efficiency uh, using a star rating. So our high grazing efficiency varieties are five star varieties. Our low grazing efficiency varieties uh, are rated as one star varieties. So this slide displays the 2021 pasture profit index again. You can see on the right hand side, we have the utilization sub index. The varieties with no utilization scores uh, are just given dots. Um, so when we're using the pasture profit index uh, to select varieties when receding, we need to decide what is the paddock use going to be on the field that we are receding. So if the paddock is located on the grazing platform, it's predominantly going to be grazed throughout the season and therefore we need to pick varieties that perform strongly in grazing traits. And these traits are the quality sub-index, the grazing utilization sub-index, and also the spring yield sub-index. Uh, we also may have paddocks on our farm that we're receding. They might be located on an out farm or they might be located uh, across a road that um, isn't going to be grazed as often throughout the grazing season. Uh, these varieties are going to be most likely cut for silage during the year. So therefore, we need to pick varieties that perform strongly in the silage sub-index and also within the spring yield sub-index. Uh, so to finish up here, um, I've talked about the pasture profit index, uh, which is a variety selection tool which has received widespread industry use and support um, from commercial farmers and um, seed companies in Ireland. I've also talked about the new utilization sub-index. This uh, sub-index was demanded by farmers who were noticing grazing differences between varieties on their farms. And since its introduction this year, it has received very strong feedback from the industry. Looking forward to the future, we need to further develop um, forage evaluation in Ireland. 
We have plans to introduce new perennial ryegrass traits uh, with a focus on environmental efficiency and also with clover compatibility. And also into the future, we are planning on um, introducing a new clover variety selection index um, similar to the pasture profit index. So um, thanks very much for listening to this presentation.